Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think I have nothing much left to say now because it has been wonderful days so long. And well, uh, but still, I think uh, there are some experience that uh, that only me and my fellow monks can share uh, with you. Um, so my talk is on science and spirituality, the, the journey that I've ha had uh, fortunate to have in this life. Um, first of all, I want to introduce you because uh, we are here, six monks, uh, currently studying here at Emory. These are the six selected monks um, studying at Emory. Um, we took this picture once we are here in Emory. This is a, you know amazing environment here in Emory. Um, and I'm sure that many of you have seen us walking around the campus, attending classes, working in the labs, and checking out books and DVDs from the library. And yeah, so um, you might have wondered who these people are. People with, you know, close cut hair, funny maroon dress. I wish, you know, every, every day is a Halloween so that I don't have to. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, those of you who have seen Tibetan monks before might have thought that we are here to study religion or maybe creating Sen Mandala. That's, uh, and <clears throat> but I'm a Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhist monk, and uh, there are other uh, monks who are, you can see the blue color. He's uh, not a Tibetan Buddhist, but he's an indigenous uh, religious practitioner of Tibetan. So we are here to study but not religion, science. Um, and there are many other monks who are taking science class each year in a month-long uh, science education program back in India. Um, this is one such class where monastics are learning about evolution. Uh, this is in India. Um, this phenomenon has been going on for several years now. And whole monastery because we have a different way of studying th Buddhist philosophy. We study through debate. So imagine whole monastery debating, um, not philosophical issue, but intricate matter of science. Not in lab, but in debate courtyard would be amazingly wonderful. This is how use, we used to debate. This is not a martial arts uh, <laughs> exhibition. OK, and yeah. So if this happened, then it would be a major reformation for Tibetan monastic learning. And I hope, you know, it's, uh, it's not accomplished yet, but I hope it can be accomplished in the near future. For this end, um, many science programs have been initiated to teach the monastics. Uh, science workshops, seminars, and uh, classes such as Emory Tibet Science Initiatives. Uh, has been started back in Tibetan community uh, with wonderful results. For me and many of my classmates, or uh, my fellow monks, we got this opportunity through Emory Tibet Science Initiative, or ETSI. ETSI is a joint initiative between Emory University and Library of Tibetan Works and Archives, which was started in 2006. Um, with the purpose of designing and compl uh, implementing comprehensive science education program for the Tibetan monastics. Um, its faculties mainly came from Emory University. Um, right from the beginning, Emory University and its science faculty has engaged in this collaboration with great enthusiasm and zest. Emory even met um, agreement to create a sustainable and ongoing science program to realize His Holiness the Dalai Lama's visions of providing comprehensive science education for the Tibetan monastics. I'm sure now you all may wonder why they are teaching science to the monks and nuns. What, what extra values are there? What benefits are there? Well, as a Buddhist, uh, I seek to 
understand the reality. And as well as His Holiness the Dalai Lama writes, I quote, No credible understanding of the natural world or our human existence can ignore the basic insights of theory as key as evolution, relativity, and quantum mechanics. In fact, science has the capability to reach the depth of the space or even depth of the fundamental particles, the world that has remained inaccessible to us without science or, I can add, without high degree of meditative power. I strongly believe that, you know, scientific methods of inquiry is very powerful and as well as very useful to, to, tool to have. For instance, I find the theory of evolution based on natural selections to be evidence-based, sensible way of explaining the origin and growth of life on this planet. It explains in great detail the evolution of uh, physiological structure and functions of organisms. Well, in Buddhist texts, there are brief mentions about how sentient beings evolve in our world system. However, the mechanism of such evolution has not been identified. Therefore, I feel that Darwin's theory of evolution can complement and add richness to our worldview. Similarly, the clear descriptions of elementary particles and how the entire material world is constituted of these particles are very helpful insight to have. The descriptions of ephemeral nature of um, elementary particles and their unimaginably short decay time provide wonderful insight into the nature of impermanent uh, impermanent nature of these particles, which for a Buddhist practitioner like me is a very useful tool to overcome attachment. One, pra one practical application of scientific knowledge for me has been the understanding of phenomenon called apoptosis or the process of programmed cell death. This process indicates that at a very fundamental level of human body, it's in the nature of eventual decay and demise. That resonates very strongly and closely with the teaching of first noble truth, the truth of suffering. For me, this understanding brings very powerful and immediate insight into Buddhist understanding and theory of impermanence and suffering nature of our body, human body. On the other hand, I've been talking about the uh, benefits from what I learned from the science. On the other hand, Buddhist understanding of internal mental world and its contemplative techniques are highly relevant in this modern time. It has the potential to serve the humanity. Even studies show that there are many people in the West who are actually using this contemplative techniques to deal with stress, depression, and other mental afflictions. And uh, there's a Nagarjuna's theory of dependent origination, of interconnectedness, uh, are highly relevant to this modern time, whether in sociology or ecology or environmental studies. It can provide wonderful insight. And uh, his Holiness the Dalai Lama writes in universe, universe in Single Aram, I quote, Spirituality and science are different, but complementary investigative approaches with the same greater goal of seeking the truth. There is much that each may learn from other, and together they may contribute to expanding the horizon of human knowledge and wisdom. Moreover, through a dialogue between the two disciplines, I hope the science and spirituality may develop to be a better service to the needs and well-being of humanity. Well, of course, there are major differences between these two that uh, we may not be able to reconcile. 
or that may not even be necessary to be reconciled. And there are other challenges for monks like me who are studying science. Even though I enjoy listening to the lectures um, such as uh, evolution, quantum mechanics, relativity, or atomic theories, these concepts are open, deep, and complex that requiring advanced math skill that, of course, I do not possess. <laughs> Despite such limitations, I strongly feel that the exchange of ideas between these two may uh, have to continue, and there is a possibility that it can uh, create or make, it, make them more, uh, you know, helpful for the human need of humanity. I feel that this should be the larger goal between this kind of exchanges, the betterment of humanity. I would like to conclude my talk uh, with uh, yet another quote from the universe in Singularum. In essence, science and spirituality, though differing in their approaches, share the same end, which is the betterment of humanity. At its best, science is motivated by a quest for understanding to help lead us to greater flourishing and happiness. In Buddhist language, this kind of science can be described as wisdom grounded in and tempered by compassion. Similarly, spirituality is a human journey into our internal resources with the aim of understanding who we are in the deepest sense and of discovering how to live according to the highest possible idea. This too is a union of wisdom and compassion. Intelligence, when conjoined with compassion, has the potential to uplift the humanity. Science, when conjoined with spirituality, has the similar potential. I hope this kind of ex exchange continue to grow and produce wonderful fruits that we all may enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>